Okay, we're gonna call the town council meeting to order, but we have a very special group to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, so I would I like to ask Troop 441 from Webster Hill to come up and lead the Pledge of Allegiance. So come on on this side, come around the podium and come over here. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, do you want to take a picture while you're up here and we'll get everyone in there? Sure, come on, girl. Come on this side. Well, do you want it facing that? I don't know. Okay. I, you know what? I don't care. They're gonna be able to see them. She's the only one that doesn't block my. <laughs> the chair. Sorry. The Girl Scouts are taller than the mayor. I know. Shush. <laughs> Ready, girls? Say West Hartford. West Hartford. Okay. America. All right. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Thank you very much. While they're sitting down, we can take attendance, Ms. Lebrow. Mr. Barnes. Present. Ms. Cantor. Here. Ms. Kasperson's absent. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Hall. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Winograd. Here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Thank you, Ms. Lebrow. Uh, number four, Mr. Davidoff. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I move the approval of the minutes of the Town Council meeting of 9 27 2016. The minutes of the public hearing ordinance revising policies and procedures for the collection of refuge, 9-13-2016, and approval of the minutes of the public hearing, the ordinance amendment application on behalf of Lexham West Harford owner LLC of 9-27-2016. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, public forum. Uh, we have a section in the town council where people can speak for, for two minutes, unless they're a member of a group, that would be for five minutes, uh, on things that are unrelated to a public hearing, uh, but relate to something on the town council agenda. Um, I have somebody that signed up, um, Don Bailey. Coming up. And state your name and address for the record and the number, the item number that you're referring to speaking. Then you're here. You're here. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Is it in relation to the, the ordinance um, in consideration for establishments and We are holding a public hearing on that, and you're welcome to come and speak on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else that is in the audience that would like to speak to something on the agenda but not subject to a public hearing? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, number six, Mr. Davidoff. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to uh, place items 16 and 17 on the consent calendar. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Number eight, Mr. Davidoff. Uh, item number eight is an ordinance establishing procedures for licensing and public safety Police details at entertainment establishment. I move we set for public hearing on October 25th, 2016 at 6.30 p.m. in the legislative chamber. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? And that's when you can call Mr. Bailey <laughs> and speak. Okay, number nine, Mr. David. I move we adopt a resolution concerning zoning in the central business BC zone. Motions have made a second. Mr. Van Winkle, would you like to? Yes, I have uh, our Director of Community Services, Mark McGovern. Um, he's going to speak on this item and the, <coughs> the following item. Thank you. Welcome, Mark. Good evening, Mark McGovern, Community Services Director. 
Um, this resolution is a follow-up to uh, your last meeting on September 27th um, in regards to the zoning ordinance that um, was considered that evening. Um, staff has been directed in this resolution um, uh, dictates this, uh, directs the staff to start neighborhood outreach and work with a neighborhood uh, working group to look at the issues uh, related to um, the DC zone and impacts on the surrounding neighborhood, uh, the issues that were discussed in the public hearing on the 27th and also discussed um, in an earlier hearing in, in the springtime. And so uh, we're prepared to uh, set up a process and working with the neighbors, which would involve um, several meetings and, and we anticipate two public forums as part of that. We expect it to take uh, a few months. Um, we've already had good discussions with Scott Falk, uh, who's here this evening, who we've met with uh, twice, about the right way to go about doing that. So we feel confident that we'll be able to um, have our first meeting in uh, early November and be back to you in a few months with our findings. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Anybody have any? Mr. Van Winkle, did you have something? No. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Ms. Hall. Um, I'm just wondering if we could be a little bit more specific on um, who is going to be in that group, when we're going to have that. I know you said sometime in early November, but A, how, um, how are people going to find out about it? How do they get more information um, in case someone is interested? And, um, you know, I'm just sure. worried that it's still a little bit vague, and I think we need to... Um, Button everything down. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, we're we haven't finalized the, the 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 membership, so to speak, of the working group, um, but we are focusing on sort of the, the very specific zoning matters. We want to make sure that the discussion is focused, and we think we need to have a relatively small working group, um, but probably no more than ten people, um, made up of staff, uh, neighbors, and some commercial property owners as well. So we're working to identify um, the right candidates to do that. Um, Certainly, we're going to start the discussion by going through uh, sort of the, the basics of, of planning and, and, and sort of have a bit of a planning 101 session, so to speak, to, to ground the group in the principles that we're dealing with that are part of our zoning ordinances. Um, from there, it's going to be a little bit fluid, but we anticipate that by having two public workshops, we'll likely um, seek the assistance of a, a planning consultant to help facilitate that. And we will most certainly um, uh, publicize that and do what we can to get a, a much broader um, participation and a bigger, a bigger audience, so to speak, that can provide uh, input in this process along the way. And just by way of background, how long have you and your staff been working on this project um, to um, update our zoning FAR uh, ratios? Um, at least a year, mm -hmm. I would say. And was was the application or the change that was brought forward something that um, the town had expected um, would meet our needs and was in keeping with the plan of conservation and development? Um, yes, it was. It was the, the original um, FAR ordinance, so to speak, um, that was introduced last spring. Um, it was worked through committee and, and uh, done within um, sort of the, um, the goals and objectives of the plan of conservation and development. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Any other questions? Uh, thank you, Ms. Hall. Any other questions? Okay. So I will, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. And number 10, Mr. David. I move we adopt the resolution authorizing the town manager <clears throat> to execute a special use license with the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. And Mr. McGovern, I think you're addressing this too. Thank you. Still Mark McGovern, still Community Services Director. Um, so the resolution before you would authorize a town manager to execute a special use license with DEEP. And this is sort of the first step in our Park Road 84 um, interchange project. Um, in time, you will receive um, um, an easement from DEEP, which you would need to approve. Um, that's taking a little while, and so this is sort of an initial step that will allow us to do some important work in advance of the start of the project. Um, and that work really is, is, is the relocation of utility lines, um, and so there are, are some trees that he need to come down so that the utility lines can be moved prior to the start of the project. 
Um, in some cases, it's in the town right away. In other cases, it's on DOT property. But there's one section of land that's DEEP property. And this uh, use license would permit us the right to go on to that uh, area of land right next to the entrance ramp to 84 to be able to take four trees down. Thank you, Mr. McGovern. Do you want to just give a really brief um, description of the 84 project and just to give people a little context? Sure. Um, <clears throat> our, we've been working for several years now um, collaboratively with the Department of Transportation to make a major tr transportation improvement at uh, Park Road in 84. Um, in general, uh, the, the, the main aspect of the improvement is to move the exit ramp from its current location next to the current entrance ramp. Um, in addition, um, there will be two left-hand turn lanes to go along with the two existing right-hand turn lanes, and the spacing between the traffic lights in that area will be, will be lengthened, and that's really going to help congestion, and we see this as a way of really improving safety on this, on this, um, at this intersection, um, both on the uh, off-ramp, which is sort of a dangerous crest curve and it makes it difficult for people to see as they um, come off the highway and weave into a turn lane. Um, but it's also going to create um, better opportunities at the intersection of Troutbrook Drive and Park Road and uh, Park Road and Raymond Road. Um, so with these improvements, we think we'll, we'll decrease congestion, we'll reduce air pollution, we're going to make it much safer for pedestrians. The project will also include a eight-foot-wide uh, sidewalk that will run from Troutbrook Drive all the way to Raymond Road. So all those things together, um, it's, it's quite a significant project and quite extraordinary that DOT would permit um, our town engineers to design part of their highway system. And that's, that's really what's happening, which is quite exciting. And these are federal funds and some state funds that are, uh, that are available yeah, for Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think, believe a 50-40-10 project where 50% is federal, 40% state, 10% uh, town participation. All the funding flows, the federal funding flows through the state DOT. Yes, thank you. I, the Mayor Sufka and I had met uh, with uh, Senator Murphy, and he was instrumental in making this, uh, highlighting that the importance and safety of this project. So um, any questions for Mr. McGovern on this? No, I, oh, I can preempt one. When might it start? Um, aside from some of this initial work, um, we're getting our final approval, approvals from the DOT this fall. We'll be out to bid the project um, in the wintertime with with the goal of starting in uh, the spring 2017. I'm sure there will be a lot more to follow on traffic and all that when it happens. So, all right, thank you very much. Um, so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Number 11, Mr. Davidoff. I move we adopt a resolution to appropriate 41,000 in the fiscal year 2016-2017 budget of the capital and non-recurring expenditure fund for the purchase of snowplow equipment. Motion's been made in a second. I have Mr. Phillips is coming up from Director of Public Works to tell us about this. Thank you. you should know that. John Phillips, Director of Public Works. Good evening. Uh, the resolution you have before you is um, to purchase just updates, uh, some advanced equipment for our snow plows, and update a couple of our older plows. Uh, the number 41,000 came from equipment that we sold at surplus auction, old, outdated cars, stuff that just was beyond its service life. And so that's what we came up with, a number of 41,000. And then we went out looking at some of the equipment. Uh, one of the drivers to this uh, resolution was um, a new type of snow plow blade. Um, it's a carbide blade that's encoded in a rubber uh, um, compound, and it's sectional. Uh, conventionally, what we use now, what majority of the industry is using now, but again, we're all trying to switch and find that next best thing to do snow plowing. We just use a steel blade, just steel on asphalt, and we run. You hear us every night, and, and, and it's loud, and it's damaging, damaging both to the truck. You know, this is just steel and welds. It's damaging to the roads, um, but that, it's just, those are just an inherent ills to that process. These blades that are starting to be engineering that we're going to take a look at, we're going to buy uh, uh, six of them in total and test them in, in six different spots throughout the town. That rubber coating carbide system will be quieter on the rub. You won't need as much lubrication, the water, for, to re reduce the friction, um, but they're flexible. Each one comes in about a one-foot section, so not only do they flex this way, but they also flex up and down. Um, so when you hit a structure that's in the middle of the road, the rest of your blade will stay adhered to the road, and that will flex just over the manhole structure that may be in the road. So you're still maintaining contact. Right now, if we were to do that under the old technology of straight steel, the whole plow would bounce up, leave a, a section of road unplowed, and the truck continues on, but there'll be a section of road that's full of snow. 
in some cases, you leave the whole pile, whatever's carrying your blade and being rolled over will get just dumped off. And then the truck's got to make a round robin to come back and pick that up. That happens actually quite often. It's just, again, an ill to that type of technology. This will get us further along. Uh, there is a safety component to this because it's a softer, it absorbs that energy. It doesn't come through the blade, through the truck, and through the driver's hands. And I'm sure you've all felt it in just your own car. You hit a bump, you feel that jar. Well, picture yourself doing 20 miles an hour in a big truck and you hit something that can almost stop the truck. Um, so we're hopeful this blade works. Uh, in talking to other communities that are using it, mainly up north, Minnesota, Canada's using this extensively. They're seeing three-year shelf lives for this blade, which is a good thing. Uh, straight steel, we can go, sometimes you're going to two and three blades a night on one truck, but a blade never really goes more than one or two storms if you don't break it before then. Um, so we're hopeful we'll get the shelf life out of it. Again, our roads are different than Minnesota and Canada, so we've got to see how that works out, but we're certainly hopeful we'll get more than a season or two out of this new technology. And then also on that money, we're just going to, uh, we have many plows that are 93 air vintage bought. Now they're really old. They have more than enough welds on them that we just can't weld them anymore to keep them serviceable. And so we're just looking to replace a complete apparatus of the whole plow. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Mr. Phillips? It's always looking for creative new ways to do things more efficiently. Try, we're trying our best. <laughs> we're not going to get snow this winter, though, right? No, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, right. Mr. Van Winkle. Well, we have them up here. I'm going to ask him for the weather forecast because we do get long-term weather forecasts mm -hmm. that takes a look at um, what we might expect in our winters. Um, last winter, the forecast was fairly accurate as to a warmer, a less snowy winter. Um, mm -hmm. This year is going to be a little different. Yeah, we, uh, we, we subscribe to a service um, called WeatherWorks. Um, it's a uh, national weather service company. Um, it's like having your own weather meteorologist working for the town of West Hartford. A week, I can call him right now on my cell phone and he'll let me know if that shower is going to take tonight or not. Uh, so it's been a great service. They're very accurate. We've been using them for the past four or five seasons. Um, they give us snow risk analogies. They let us know weeks in advance what our risks might be over the next couple of weeks. So uh, we have a high level of confidence with our weather service. Um, and uh, yeah, last year they predicted it. Um, actually, the last couple of years they were, they were really close to what they think. And um, the reports they give us are really in-depth, and it gets beyond the commercialization of, of weather reports. It gets to why you'll see weather in certain ways through reverse oscillation and positive oscillations and El Nino's and La Nina, all those things like that. Um, this year, they're all looking for a cold winter. I think everybody's in unison that it's going to be cold. The big question mark, will there be precipitation? Uh, that, that will be the big question mark. Will, will, will we be in that jet stream that generates moisture that will come up in the cold air that should be in place? And then, so if that's the case, then we'll see, we'll see our average amount of snow, if not a little bit more. But if there's no moisture, there's no snow. Um, but let's also, uh, we are in a drought. The whole state is, the whole New England, New England region is really in a drought. Um, snow doesn't cure droughts because most snow evaporates before it turns to a water and gets in the system. Certainly helpful. We don't want to go a year without any snow. It certainly could benefit us, but... You know, uh, we are in a drought, and sometimes those patterns can hang on for a long time before you see a, a real positive change in that weather, weather pattern. Um, but my prediction is a cold winter and probably just an average amount of snow. Thank you very much. I, I should have checked. Public record now, right? So I can be held to it. <laughs> I have checked with you before I picked my son's wedding date. <laughs> oh, well. Um, all right. Thank you. That's You're really, welcome. really helpful. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Phillips? Well, he's here. Again, thank you very much for your... My pleasure. Um, number... Oh, reports from the town manager, number 12, Mr. Van Winkle. So I, most people think we just go out... Do we not vote on that? No. Okay. No, didn't All vote. those in... Yeah. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. No, Mr. So most people think we start the plows up and go off into the night and plow at... This, even snow plowing is a science, if you will, um, science of the weather, a science of the machinery. Um, you know, we've changed our snow plows rather than just casting lots of salt out. Um, they actually have regulators depending on the temperature of the, of the uh, road. Uh, John's truck, as he drives around, he can tell you what the temperature of the road is. And that helps us uh, determine how much uh, salt we put out on our, our streets. So. It's a fascinating field that's changed dramatically in the last decade. But before the snow comes, we have autumn. And um, our 10-week leaf bag collection will begin October 24th. So if you uh, 
are out raking your yard, uh, you can put your, um, your leaf bag at the edge of the road. Um, you can put it out on Monday and uh, during your trash collection day. We will come every week for 10 weeks and pick up um, your leaf bags. Um, only 30 gallon biodegradable um, leaf bags are collected. No plastic bags. Um, don't put garbage in them. We're collecting leaves that we're, we um, then recycle. They shouldn't weigh more than 60 pounds. If you can get 60 pounds of leaves in a bag, God bless you, huh? Um, so if you just um, get that bag out by 6 a.m. on your trash day or sooner of the day before or the, um, the truck will um, go by your house um, every week and pick up uh, the, the leaves that are out there. Um, the police department is running a recruitment fair and open house on October 29th from 12 to 4 p.m. Um, we are down seven officers in our police force, and so we are recruiting new police officers um, for our, the West Hartford Police Department. If you've always wondered what it might be like to work for a police department, um, here's your chance to get an inside look. You come to our West Hartford Police Station. Um, uh, we're hiring. Uh, we would like to attract applicants and um, have them come and uh, take a look at what a career in law enforcement might be. Um, and so our recruitment job fair and open house is on Saturday, October 29th um, from 12 to 4 um, at our, uh, our West Hartford Police Station. Um, members of the training division, community relations, will explain the hiring process and um, help and many other residents will be on hand to explain the, um, the role of a police officer in a community. Um, it's, this is a really a great community to be an officer in. Um, we have a, an incredibly well-trained um, uh, police force in our community that um, keeps us safe. Um, and so if someone um, is looking for a, a different career or a first career, that um, can be very um, rewarding. Um, and then this is a great example of where you might try. And it never hurts to stop by on Saturday, the 29th, and hear what that job might be. Um, Gentech smoke alarms are available. The fire department has instituted a program for providing smoke alarms to persons who have hearing impairments, um, and these smoke alarms are free. The special Gentech smoke alarms contain a powerful strobe light that has proven to be effective in waking persons who are deaf or hard of hearing. The alarms were purchased through a grant from Factory Mutual Insurance, that's the insurance company that the town uses for many, most of its buildings. Um, if um, to obtain one, you need to just call the fire department, 860-561-8320. You look us up in the, on, in, I'm going to say look us up in the phone book, but uh, <laughs> look us up online. You can uh, get the number for the fire department. Um, again, uh, program, these are free and um, available to those who have hearing impairments. That's really all I have tonight. It's a very short agenda. If you have some questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Van Winkle. Anybody have questions for the town manager? No? Okay. Uh, we're moving on to number 13. I have a few announcements, and we will, um, if anyone else has them after me. We are, the town is seeking new members for the Substance Abuse Prevention Commission. The West Harbor Substance Abuse Prevention Commission uh, has needs new members uh, that will be appointed by the town council, so if you have an interest, um, please let us know. The commission's mandate is to advise the council on ways that it may help address the problems of substance abuse in the entire West Hartford population. If you are interested, please contact the Joanna Curry Saratori the Joanna, I guess, uh, Sartori at the Bridge Family Center at 860-313-1119, extension 109, or Joanna at Bridge Family Center, one word, dot org. The deadline is October 19th, 2016. Flu Immunization Clinics, Wednesday, October 13, 19, and 20. The West Hartford Bloomfield Health District is offering two upcoming flu immunization clinics to the community. Uh, Wednesday, October 19th, 12 to 2. Thursday, October 20th, 12 to 10 to 12, sorry, on that one. And that's all I have on that. I don't know about the 13th. Isn't, the hours aren't listed. Uh, 
Um, 13th annual Celebrating Gifts of Music Benefit Concert Saturday, October 15th at 7.30. John Mastriani and Friends and the fabulous vocalist Alita Moses, uh, a talented graduate of West Hartford Public Schools, will perform as special guests at the 13th annual Celebrating Gifts of Music Benefit Concert uh, at the Intensive Education Academy. Tickets are $25. Visit www.giftsofmusic.us. Uh, they're very talented. Uh, Alita is really great. Family Outdoor Flea Market, Saturday, October 15th at the Elmwood Community Center uh, from 9 to 3. If you're a bargain hunter, don't miss the fabulous deals. Rain event is Sunday, October 16th. Blood Drive at Town Hall, Monday, October 17th, 12 to 530 October is Liver Awareness Month and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The American Red Cross encourages el eligible donors to give blood in support of liver and other transplant patients, as well as those fighting cancer. A blood drive will be held on Monday, October 17, 12 to 5.30 at the Town Hall, uh, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS to make an appointment uh, for that or somewhere else. Little Shop of Horrors, and I threw October 16th at Playhouse on Park. Uh, box office. Uh, tickets are $35 to $50, uh, www.playhouseonpark.org for your tickets or visit the box office. Candidates Forum, Tuesday, October 18th, 8 a.m. Um, well, you can hear from uh, Chris Barnes running for state rep. Uh, Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring a Candidates Forum in preparation for upcoming election in November. Economic development will be the focus of discussion on Tuesday, October 18th at 8 a.m. at Atria Hamilton Heights. Uh, this event is free for chamber members, $10 for non-members to register or go to the chamber website. West Hartford Hauntings, October 21st, 22nd, 28th, and 29th. Uh, Noel Webster House uh, Spooky Theatrical Cemetery Tour returns for its 12th year. The Lantern Lit Tours takes place at the North Cemetery on Fridays and Saturdays. Tour leaves every 15 minutes from 6 to 8.45 and runs for 45 minutes. Guests are escorted through the stones by a dearly departed guide. Tickets are $15 for adults and $10 for children. Call Noah Webster House at 860-521-5362. Brews for a Cause, Friday, October 21st, 6 to 9 at the Playhouse on Park. Uh, bubbling fun and merriment on, let's see, what are the hours? Yeah, 6 to 9, uh, $40 tickets and um, maximum beverage. You can get them at either Playhouse on Park or Maximum Beverage or online. National Take Back Day, uh, Saturday, October 22nd, 10 to 2. The West Hartford Police Department and the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District are coordinating a collection of unwanted and unused pharmaceutical controlled substances and other medicine during National Take Back Day. Collection activities will take place in the Town Hall parking lot from 10 to 2. Program is anonymous and free of charge. It's important that those not go in the uh, water stream. United Methodist Church Annual Harvest Fair, Saturday, October 22nd, 9 to 2. Stop by at the United Methodist Church um, to browse lo lovely craft items, home accessories, seasonal items, fall and winter, and indulge at the bakery booth for homemade pies, breads, cakes, and cookies. Uh, then go to the silent auction, white elephant, collectible booths, and visit the pumpkin patch. Admission is free. Church is located at 1358 New Britain Avenue. Uh, the Symphony Orchestra 2016 Autumn Concert on Sunday, October 23rd at 3 p.m. It opens its 15th, the West Harvard Symphony Orchestra opens its 15th anniversary season with Ravel's Piano Concerto on Sunday, October 23rd at 3 in the Roberts Auditorium of Kingswood Oxford School. Um, the WHSO will feature symphony favorites from over its 15-year repertoire. For tickets, please call 860-521-4362. Also, tickets will be sold at the door. The Mandel JCC Jewish Book Festival opens October 23rd at 1 p.m. Uh, Best-selling author Jennifer Weiner, who, can, who debuted her moving memoir, Hungry Heart, Adventures in Life, Love, and Writing, on Sunday, October 23rd at 1. Uh, tickets are $40 per person and includes a meet, includes the book and meet the author reception. Uh, you can get those office at Mandel JCC on their website, tickets at mandeljcc.org, or 860 Two three one six three one six. West Hartford Public Mentors Program Workshop will be held on Tuesday, October twenty fifth. Think of mentors in your young life: a team, a coach, a teacher, concerned neighbor, or another caring adult. Um, it can change a young person's life. Uh, the program workshop is October twenty fifth, six thirty to seven forty five at Conard High School, Room one sixty nine. To sign up, go to Carol. 
wilkes at whps.org. And the last thing I have is the Halloween Stroll, Saturday, October 29th, 10.30 to 12.30. Costume children of all ages are invited for a fun morning in the West Hartford Center and Blueback Square for moms and more of West Hartford's annual Halloween Stroll on Saturday, October 29th, 10.30 to 12.30. And there will be kid-friendly music prizes, food giveaways, and a fire truck. Um, and if anybody else has um, others, I'd be glad to hear from you. But I know there is also a trick-or-treating event at Conard that is free, and I have some information on I have to find it. But yes, yes. Oh, I did not. I left something for you. I just um, wanted to point out that um, if you're watching this on TV, it's through um, West Hartford Community TV. We've got an award-winning um, local TV station uh, run by Jen Evans and they're having a fundraiser on October 28th um, Friday evening at 7 p.m. at Wampanoag Country Club um, on Wampanoag Drive in West Hartford you can go to the website to order your tickets online which is whctv.org or I'm sure if you email Jennifer at westharfordct.gov she would also get you um hooked up with tickets so hope you can make it and support our wonderful tv station thank you miss hall anybody else yes miss kerrigan thank you madam mayor <laughs> october 29th uh the orange bowl it's a halloween birthday bash celebrating uh united uh, unified theater Celebrating 15 years, it's at the Town Hall. It's uh, from 7 to 11 on Saturday, October 29th. Wonderful. Thank you, Mrs. Kerrigan. Anybody else? I cannot. I know. I know. There's a lot going on. October is not a sleepy month. Yes. <laughs> it's true. All right. Well, I'm going to come up with that Connor date. It's a great thing that the Connor offers for little kids to trick or treat. And I can't find it. Anyway, um, I think that's all we have on that. Uh, now we go to reports from Corp Council. Yes. <laughs> um, first of all, Pat sends his regrets. He'll be back with you for the next town council meeting. Um, there is no need for an executive session, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any questions for Ms. Bonham? No? Thank you very much. Uh, number, f we have no appointments. Uh, number 16, Mr. Davidoff. Uh, number 18 would oh, be right, the, uh, I move the adoption of the consent calendar. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, number 19, Mr. Davidoff. Uh, I move we receive the resignation of Beth Flander Morris from the Second. Conservation and Environment Commission. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Number 20. I move we receive the resignation of Conchetta Mello, also known as Connie Mello, resigning from the Senior Citizens Advisory Commission. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? I think Mrs. Hall has something to say. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? I, I just Aye. wanted to point out that Connie Mello has uh, really done a great job on the um, Senior Citizens Advisory Commission. and. We accept her resignation with regrets and thank her for her service, as I'm sure we also do for Beth um, Morris on, on CEC. So thank you. We, um, As we heard tonight, there's definitely a need for people to volunteer on different boards and commissions. And if you have any interest in volunteering in town, I know um, we will need to replace Connie on the on the uh, Senior Citizens Advisory Commission. There's more information about all the boards and commissions on the town's website. So, hope you can support those commissions as well. Thank you, Mrs. Hall. Okay, uh, number, no, tw no petitions, uh, no executive session. Number 23, Mr. David. Move we adjourn. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed?